Over the last few weeks, Wyoming has continued to blaze ahead of other U.S. states as a digital asset-friendly jurisdiction. The Wyoming Division of Banking WDB, issued a no-action letter to Two Ocean Trust, confirming that its status as a qualified custodian extends to digital assets on October 23 and then a few days later approved Avanti as a special-purpose depository institution for digital assets. Two Ocean's no-action letter, which the WDB provided to the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, prior to issuance prompted the SEC's Division of Investment Management to issue a public statement encouraging direct engagement with the SEC on the application of the custody rule to digital assets, including with respect to the definition of qualified custodian under the rule. As noted in an earlier piece surveying global digital asset laws, Wyoming is the most progressive U.S. state with regards to digital asset regulation, and their legislature has been active in making their laws accommodating to digital asset businesses since 2018. Many states lack the regulatory certainty surrounding the treatment of digital assets and thus, even if a qualified custodian has the authority to custody digital assets. The lack of a regulatory framework surrounding safekeeping and security specific to digital assets can raise red flags for investors and, as evidenced by the SEC's statement, regulatory concerns in the absence of a statutory framework for the custody of such assets. Wyoming is unique in codifying digital assets as property under the Uniform Commercial Code with processes for perfection and custody. In addition to providing for the formation of SBDIs, a class of banks focusing on digital assets, the legislature has passed digital asset custody rules and property tax exemptions for cryptocurrencies. Advertisement The No Action Letter and the SEC's Response For the No Action Letter, the WDB recognized that a trust's qualified custodian status extends into digital assets within the context of Wyoming's existing regulation. The significance is that per the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, Advisors Act, registered investment advisors can only retain custody of client funds and securities through a qualified custodian. This can be limiting for investment advisors since many traditional banks and trusts refuse to custody digital assets. Although the Office of the Controller of the Currency's recent interpretive letter regarding the authority of national banks to provide cryptocurrency custody services will make it easier for banks to custody currencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, the qualified custodian requirement applies only to holding digital assets that are regulated as securities. Per Section 206, 4, 2 of the Advisors Act, a qualified custodian includes banks, savings associations, registered broker-dealers holding client assets, futures commission merchants holding client assets, and foreign financial institutions providing generally that the foregoing holds financial assets in client accounts. A bank includes trust companies receiving deposits or exercising fiduciary power similar to a bank and that is supervised and examined by state or federal authority having supervision over it. The WDB concluded that Two Ocean was a bank with regards to digital assets. In assessing the no-action letter, the SEC asked whether state chartered trust companies possess characteristics similar to qualified custodians as defined in the Advisors Act, and inquired whether any additional enhancements were necessary for state chartered trust company IES to serve as qualified custodians. I view this as a conversation starter. It is unlikely the SEC would revise this qualified custodian definition to single out state chartered trust companies as there are larger challenges that both FINRA and SEC have noted with regards to applying customer protection rule to digital assets, a framework along with the CFTC's customer fund segregation rules to a lesser extent, in need of revision to address digital assets. In the public statement, the SEC also asked, Are there qualities in a qualified custodian that would be specifically important for safeguarding digital assets? Should the customer protection rule prescribe different qualities based on asset class, or should the rule take a more principles-based approach? The SEC's recognition of the issues potentially raised by the no-action letter and its seeking to engage in a dialogue is arguably a positive signal and step towards providing more regulatory clarity to the benefit of all states. Advertisement Wyoming is a favorable jurisdiction for digital asset trusts. In the case of Wyoming, however, they have legislated a thoughtful, comprehensive regulatory framework for digital assets. For two ocean trust and trusts possibly following in its footsteps, this clarity may provide assurance to investors seeking advisory services for both digital and traditional assets, as well as associated tax and estate management considerations. Joel Reville, co-founder and CEO of Two Ocean Trust, says. Two Ocean Trust's most important differentiation is access to Wyoming's trust laws, low tax burden, privacy, creditor protection laws, and in addition to the regulatory oversight and clarity from the no-action letter. There is also this raft of laws that provide investor protections for digital asset investors that are really only available at this point in Wyoming. With the regulation of trusts come obligations in addition to Wyoming's enhanced digital custody regime. Specifically, public trust companies are subject to the WDB's regulation, supervision, and periodic examination and have activity-specific capital reserves maintenance requirements. In the no-action letter, 
the WDB notes that financial institutions in custody of digital assets will be held to high supervisory standards. With a specific focus on AML slash BSA slash KYC slash sanctions compliance, custody and fiduciary activities, capital markets, information security and payment system risk. Wyoming, irrespective of digital assets, is also a favorable jurisdiction for public trusts. For example, dynasty trust rules allow trusts to be shielded from most taxation for 1,000 years, and there is protection against creditor seizures, as well as other rules to simplify trust migrations or adjustments. Thank you.